the French television station France 24. President Yoram Seveni was asked why African nations were always second or slow in reacting to African crises and whether the African nations were always waiting for international support to resolve these crises. Tonight on Newsnight, we ask whether the African continents do not actually um, work with each other in trying to resolve the crisis with neighboring countries or even within the African continent. That discussion on Newsnight. Welcome back. Joining me again via Skype, Andrew Mender, journalist, researcher and uh, former fellow of the Stanford University, father of the clan. Andrew, uh, many thanks for joining us. You are welcome, Maurice. Very quickly, Andrew, um, you want to respond to the fact that we have received backlash, a lot of backlash for your last comments, especially your comments which are put in bad test over the death of Mandela. Uh, we won't go into that. Uh, but do you want to reply to some of the backlash? I was very happy. With the, it was not a very big backlash. It's a few uh, extremists in the Ugandan intellectual community. But you see, what was intriguing for me is that each time we criticize Museven, Museven says the radio station should be closed or the, or the newspaper should be closed. And when you express an opinion his opponents don't agree with, they say, well, that should be taken off MTV. So how different are they from Museven? And this is what I've been arguing, that you see, if you look at people in the government and people in the opposition, they represent the same political culture of intolerance, militarism, and belligerence. And we need to resist the tyranny of the state and the anarchy of the opposition. And we can only do that by building a civic space within civil society that defends particular principles, that we can agree without being disagreeable, that we can tolerate each other's differences and that what makes a healthy society is the fact that we can share ideas even when we disagree we can still live together and work together in our intellectual disagreements all right andrew and uh, again i need to say this that uh, online you normally get back to your uh, those who have asked questions pertinent questions on a topic we have discussed whether it's on ntv or even in the independent that you actually always reply so if anyone wants to discuss with us our hashtag is at the bottom of the screen ntv news night but also you can write directly to andrew at andrew mwenda on twitter and he always gets back to those who actually respond to his comments andrew very quickly um over the weekend the president Museveni spoke to france 24 and he was asked why africa has actually delayed to put together a force to go to the Central African Republic, um, having, of, of course, again, failed to send a force to Ivory Coast in the past and Mali also in the past. Your, your, your reaction to that? First of all, Maurice, you know, I do not believe in foreign aid. Whether that foreign aid is given by a European country, an American country, or an Asian country to an African country, or by an African country to another African country. I believe that essentially countries should seek to solve their problems themselves some do not have the capacity to solve their own problems the central african republic for one uh, i do not agree with that in fact i think that the best way to solve the problems of the central african republic is to let the belligerents fight until one side secures a decisive military victory because i should tell you that uh, one of my friends professor james Ferron at stanford university did a study of civil wars for the last 65 years and he found that the uh, civil war resumed in eight eight percent of the cases where the united nations had peacekeepers and he found that in 87 percent of the countries where there was a decisive military victory by one side they were able to have a lasting peace so the lesson you learn from that is that you must give war a chance that the best way to end a war is to let the belligerents fight until one side secures a decisive military victory or to let the two belligerents fight until they're exhausted by fighting so that they recognize that the mutual accommodation is more profitable than a continued combat you have said this also in reference to the Democratic Republic of Congo, but the crisis there does never, never stops, even when the two parties continue to fight against each other. We have a standby force of the UN that has been there for decades, and, and we have, of course, the scenario that played out in 2007 in Kenya, 2007-2008. We have genocide that played out in Rwanda in 94. These are scenarios that people present on paper and say, listen, here we've let the African countries try to resolve their own issues, but thousands, if not millions, have died. Well, I'll give you an example of Congo. You have mentioned that the civil war in Congo has been going on for the last 10 years 
in, in spite of, and I want to add, also because of the presence of UN troops. So that confirms my point that the presence of international forces or international cartel of good intentions does not necessarily solve your problems. But most of the time, Two, the UN forces... Somalia, hold yes. a second, Morris. Yes. If you look at Somalia, this guy, Mah Mohamed Farai did, had the capability to actually end conflict in uh, Somalia. He was knocked out by the Americans. In uh, 2007, I personally flew from Stanford, University where I was in California, to go and meet Jenda Fraser, who was Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs, to advise them to allow the Islamic Courts Union in Somalia to take power. We talked. She did not uh, agree with me. And the United States with Ethiopia went and knocked the Islamic Courts Union out of power. That is why the evolution of a strong and capable government that, A, can organize resources, mobilize people, and be able to secure the whole of uh, Somalia militarily has not been an internal failure of the, of the Somali people. It has been because of external interventions. Now, my own point is this, that countries should be able to receive foreign help. But foreign help should be secondary, not primary. In other words, if any of uh, the international uh, members of the international community want to help Central African Republic, they must either help one side secure a decisive military victory rather than standing between the belligerents. Because ultimately, you cannot build a nation, Morris, from outside. I'll give you an example of Afghanistan. The United States and its NATO allies constitute the largest and most powerful military alliance in the history of humankind. The United States alone spends $100 billion in fighting a war in Afghanistan, and they have so far spent $700 billion in about 12 years. $700 billion. The total amount of money Museven has spent since he became president of Uganda is about $43 billion. What does that teach us? You cannot begin a civil war in any part of Uganda and Museven does not smoke you out on $43 billion. The Amer of a period of 27 years. The Americans with $700 billion in 11 years cannot even secure Kabul because last year the Taliban attacked the American embassy for two days. The fight was taking place at the American embassy in the capital Kabul. So you clearly see that however wealthy you may be, however powerful your military may be, with drones, tanks and the whatever satellites in space, you cannot build a nation with military intervention from abroad. That is an internal solution. Andrew, you've seen African leaders rush to China and most recently rush to France to discuss crisis on the African continent. Now the African leaders have come together and formed what they've called the African Crisis Response Force. Is that the solution to the crisis? And I know you say we, we should the countries should be let resolve their own problems. Let me tell you what African leaders are doing. You see, if you are an African country and you send troops under the aegis of the UN or under that African Crisis Response Force, what happens? It will always be financed by the Americans. So they will get part of your army. I will give you an example like Uganda's Soma mission in Somalia. For every, for every single gun, bullet, tank, helicopter Uganda sent to Somalia, the Americans reimburse Uganda with a new gun and tank. That is one. Two. All the Ugandan soldiers there are paid in dollars. Now, that could get patronage from Museveni to keep his army well paid. That's why every nine months they send soldiers. So to ensure that different soldiers can earn the $1,000 a month. And two, the government of Uganda can get a brand new military equipment for free. So you should understand that these interventions have an ulterior motive. One, for Museveni, it's to sustain the alliance with the United States, which is the world superpower, so that they can prop his position in Uganda, Two, to get patronage for his soldiers. Three, to get heavy equipment on the cheap. That does not necessarily mean that Museveni is going to build Somalia. And I can tell you, Ugandan army will not build Somalia. Somalia will have to be built by Somalis. The French army will not stabilize the Central African Republic. Central African Republic can only be stabilized by Central Africans themselves. Now, of course, I have told you that you may need external intervention. Only under one condition. That it is subject to the control of the domestic political forces. Two that its role is extremely secondary and not primary. Those are the two conditions. And therefore, its contribution must not be decisive. It must be subsidiary. Many thanks, Andrew Mwenda. Well, Andrew there on his response to the... And Yes, uh, resolving the crisis in the Central African Republic and, of course, on the African continent. And that was Newsnight.